and it's been another week. Last week, many of you thought our, our new kitchen looked lovely, so I thought today we would be out on, on the magnificent deck. This is not where we moved. This is Eliza's grandfather's house. And we are staying here for one month until our new apartment is ready for us to move in. So next week, we have a lot of moving to do actually, but I'm sure I'll fit an update in there somewhere. And at that point, you may see what our new place looks like. Today we're gonna have a guest, but before we do that, please check the emails that you donated to the campaign with because now I'm trying to get t-shirt sizes together. I'm trying to get all these responses together for people who donated. It's time to start getting those things done. I've spent a lot of time working on the episode lately and it makes me just wanna get those t-shirts out to everybody. Today we're gonna to talk with Jake. Jake wanted to know a little bit about getting a community together on YouTube. So today we're gonna to talk about communities on YouTube. Everybody welcome Jake. We talked on Skype. I guess I'm just curious about getting a web series started. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm just a fledgling YouTuber, so I want to know more about how to really get started, how you got started, what that was like. Sure. I had some friends who had been helping me make movies since high school. We were doing that thing where you're hanging out, you're watching movies, you're doing this stuff, and then all of a sudden you, you get like, oh man, I really wish I was doing something. So you get together and you make a short something. And then that would satisfy that itch for a while. And then you'd be like hanging out, watching movies, all that stuff, and be like, oh man, I really wish I could, you know? And then it got to a certain point where like, let's do like a full on series. I wrote one episode. I thought we would shoot an episode every weekend <laughs> and that it would be easy to put together and that it wouldn't take much time. I was like, let's just throw them together fast, just fast. And, and Ryan was actually the one, Ryan is my friend who is the DP on the show. He. He was like, look, man, if we're going to do this, make it as good as you can. And I was like, okay. That's when I bought the HV40 for episode three, you know, still doing it on our own dime. And they were like, we need to raise money. And I was like, I don't want to do that. But the bare essential starting point, depending on the kind of web series that you want to do, depends on if you need other people to make it happen or not. I was watching your channel and it seems like you've got a real kind of Bill Nye the Science Guy kind of vibe to it. You know, checking out your reel and everything. So that's like a one-man show operation. Is that the kind of web series you were thinking about? I mean, that's the way it's been so far. It's all I know. I occasionally, I try and like get my girlfriend to help me just like press record, maybe check to see if I am in focus, because <laughs> I don't even have like a monitor or anything. So yeah. I have the little tiny screen on the on the uh, camera, and so basically I'll hit record. So yeah, I think I'm in focus. Go check, watch the recording. Okay, it's not in focus. Fix it a little bit. Do that for a while, and then eventually I can actually start recording. Yeah. So as, as a one-man thing, it works. It doesn't work very efficiently. It would be cool to have one other person helping me. Is that the series that you would like to continue to develop? The kind of the, the, okay, the science series. Tell me a little bit about how you decided to start that. Well, I know from age approximately five or six, I knew I wanted to be a scientist of some kind. Started out wanting to be a paleontologist. I think everyone wants to at some point be doing something with dinosaurs. Yeah, um, you wanted to be I, Dr. I Grant. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And then instead of like changing my career goals over time, I just kept adding on to them. So eventually I wanted to be a paleontologist, an archaeologist, a marine biologist, a cryptozoologist, like all these different ologists just <laughs> compounding. And then some point around like fifth grade, I thought, I want to make like nature documentaries. That would be what I want to do. Like, you know, watch all the Bill Nye, watch Kratz creatures, all that kind of stuff. And think, okay, either documentaries or like some kind of shorter form educational show. That would be really cool. I settled on biology in particular, but it's always been the exact same career trajectory for my entire life basically now. I started watching YouTube more regularly, got into, you know, Craig stuff, um, seeing people who are actually doing YouTube and making it happen. Now there was one update of your presentation is Paramount. Yeah. Was the name of the update. And that was something that I really had in mind the whole time too. I wanted to start this thing. I kept I've been talking about it for years. People say, Oh I'm gonna make this thing, it's gonna be so cool. For years I talked about it, but I didn't have a camera, I didn't have any kind of way of recording audio. And so as I slowly accrued stuff, you know, I got a camera with income tax return money. I finally <laughs> uh, actually just updated my audio pretty recently. I've been learning After Effects and really simple motion graphics animations. But that's yeah, a big that's step great. forward for me. So just yeah, no, I saw it on your on your videos. I saw it on your reel. You had the, the motion animation stuff. That was all actually um, from plugins on Final Cut. So really, really like <laughs> not at all how you're supposed to animate anything it was not the right way it worked but dude that's the youtube way that's the yep. youtube way like what what do i have available to me how do i make that work to do what i want to do that's all it always is for the self-taught people originally the plan was write everything in june shoot everything in july edit it all in august and then release it in september 
Yeah. None of that happened. I ended up just sh- <laughs> uh, writing, shooting, and editing everything in October and releasing it all at the same time. But then I actually learned how fast I could do it all, too, as far as flying by the seat of my pants. But I knew that if I didn't do it right then, I was never going to get to it. I kept pushing it off, thinking, okay, I can't start till I could have started it ages ago. But I didn't yeah. have a good camera. I didn't have good anything. I wanted it to look <laughs> good first. I wanted it to actually be something people would take seriously. I didn't want to start until I could do it right. Randomly, I had a lull in my actual research stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take this time to just focus on this. And I was really, it was so satisfying to actually get something out there finally and have my ideas be a thing. I'm just craving getting back into it again, but like, yeah. yeah, I've graduated now. Now I need to get a job. I have a master's in zoology. The passion project and day job balance, like you said, how it's it's not that easy to do. Survival <laughs> first, creativity second. But you were super smart, man. You started a different channel once you had the presentation you wanted. Pops has done amazing things for us and it's helped us grow a wonderful audience of people around us who have supported it more than I ever thought they would. But those early episodes will always be the thing holding us down. Because uh, as soon as somebody watches Intro to Pops, I have the links to every episode right at the end of that trailer. And even the people who are like, yeah, man, this is really good. Have you pitched this to anybody? Have you taken this around? Like, I'm like, just press on one there. They press on episode one and they're like, oh yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> you know, as soon as somebody jumps back to episode one and sees how it started, it's, it's over because presentation is paramount. I don't know if you have any kind of advice about how to get traction. Do you have any advice for for beginners about how to just kind of really get going? This is the Rob Scallon method. Do you know who Rob Scallon is? Yes. Okay, not only an awesome guitar player and video maker, but he is super savvy about pushing it out there. The internet has everything. There's a portal for e- everything, right? And there are tons of places on the internet, you probably frequent them already, that are interested in the things that you're interested in and the content that you're making, you know? Sciencey type stuff. Like you said, you're about to do a video on humidity. So if you go, once your hum- humidity video is done, if you go to several of those portals and be like, oh yeah, here's my thing on humidity. The people who are already interested in that subject will find your video and if it has a good thumbnail, they'll click on it and you know, your presentation in your reel that I watched is very friendly and it's very approachable and likable, you know? Or even like science blogs and nature blogs and and things like that. Send messages directly to the people who are curating them and putting them together and writing them. If they are doing something on that topic, they might pull your stuff in too, you know? Finding those people outside of YouTube is kind of a way that people don't do it, but should. The smartest people aren't just like looking for things within the insular community of YouTube. They're trying to pull from out. And the Rob Scallon method is do all of their work for them. When you have your video put together, when you send that, you don't be like, hey, here's my video or whatever. Be like, hey, here's a cool video about this topic. Then put like a synopsis underneath it a thumbnail and a link to the video. That way, if they want to feature it on their thing, they already have the thumbnail in place, the synopsis in place, and the link. And you've done all of their work for them, there's no reason for them not to put it up. I think part of my problem has been getting stuck up in my head with the idea that how can I stand out? And there are so many different science educational vlog type things. It's like, how can I make mine different from those? It's like, well, I can make it not, not be a vlog, be more like an actual TV show or something. It could be me instead of them. I don't know what else is different about it, but just trying to make it something new. So I think being hung up on the idea that it's one more video on top of the many, many videos that are there. But if I can just kind of forget about that and just push through it anyway. No matter what, it's you putting your own spin on it. So you're not doing the same thing as everyone else because it is you. The way you edit it, the way you decide to present the information, that is all your own thing. Your passion about these things, that's what people want to see. They want to see someone who's ex- as excited about this stuff as they are. Just the fact that it's your own personal expression is enough to differentiate it. And I think you just got to keep doing what you're doing. I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to go. Well, thanks very much. That's very useful advice, all of it. (laughs) It's been a good YouTube therapy session for me. (laughs) And thank you for helping us make episode 10 happen, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited to see you. It has gotten significantly brighter, so I need to go inside before I get sunburned. Happens easily. Thanks again to Jake so much for helping us make Pops episode 10 a reality, and thank you for agreeing to come and talk with me today. Top link in the dubs is Jake's channel, Withy Labs. You should check it out. He says he's going to have new content up there very soon. Absolutely worth checking out. If you guys want to check out something else, the second link in the dubs will be to my new video reel that I put together, uh, just showing some of my work of pop, some of my other video work that I've done. It's around two minutes in length and it's up on Vimeo. I put it on Vimeo because I wanted to use very 
commercial music. <laughs> Thanks again, and I will see you guys in a week. That's the Pop Go. Bye.